Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Shadow of the Erd Tree. Oh, look where we are. There's a mickle across here and there's a big, big old puddle of water. Interesting. Well, it's uh, Monday the 5th of August, I think. Yesterday was my birthday. And... Yoink. I'll have to preemptively apologize if you hear me shouting at cat during this episode. I'm looking after uh, my parents cat for a week, which is fine, but my cat, um, well he's very excited that there's another cat here. And he keeps trying to harass her. My cat's two years old, by the way. Just turned two. And my parents' cat is like 14, I think. Ow. Now, that's what my cat's trying to do, basically. But yeah, no, it's um it's not really a big deal either way. That's a bigger deal. But, yeah, he just... That looked so stupid, buddy. Oh, I almost hit your head. Can I block that? Yes, but it's stupid. Whatever, nerd, get out of here. Um, yeah. Nice. Really nice. Well, anyway, today, as you probably figured out, we're going up to this area. I was debating whether to do, like, some dungeons or something. What did we do last time? It was... Oh, yeah. Bail. It's been a couple days since I've done anything because uh, I was... I had, like, eight episodes, basically, to go through, edit, render, and upload. Which, uh, editing doesn't take super long. Rendering takes pretty long. And then uploading takes about an hour per episode, roughly. Hmm. Is, is there anything up there? I don't remember. Again, there's, there's a couple of areas in this DLC where they're huge, but there's not really much there. Like, uh... This area, which is absolutely massive compared to, like, if you look at it in terms of percentage of the total map, there's virtually nothing here. There's, like, something here, something here, but uh, we don't need to worry about that just yet. Um, this area is really cool looking, though, by the way, the Cerulean Coast. Fantastic. But and we're not here to look at it. Yeah, in fact, we're leaving it behind almost immediately. And yeah, there are some things in the Cerulean Coast that I did sort of off-camera, because it's not very... interesting. Ooh, these slimes. They think I don't know they're there, but I know. We're coming up to one of the funniest sets of bonfires in the game not far ahead where it's like ah bonfire and then bonfire right next to it oh what's that it's not, it's not a fog gate is it Oh, is it... Is it blocked off until... That thing happens? Oh, it must be. Oh, I did not know that, as I didn't come here. Well, you know what? That explains why there's a bonfire here, at least. Okay, that's really interesting. I had no idea that... Happened. Why does that happen? Huh, I wonder what the purpose of that is.
Sealed and obscured by Mikola. Huh. Is that the sign of Mikola's Halic tree? Do I even have anything which, like... Hmm. I don't know, I need to look at it. Oh, that's really... That's really interesting. Um, well, okay, I guess we won't go through there today. That was my plan, but... Okay, no, that's fine. Um, well, okay, instead, we'll do... Um... Oh, we have a couple dungeons to go through. Well, we did everything there. Also, I'm... I'm a bit disappointed all these, like, islands are all pointless. I mean, they're not really islands, so to speak, but... Yeah, they're just, like, incidental map details, but still, sad. Um... I just think we have Bonnie Jail. Um, that's the nearest one, right? Oh, we do have. Yeah, the the ruined forges. Should I do all those on camera? There's only like what three of them. There's one there. There's one there and. Where's the last one? Ah. Uh. Oh. I don't remember. That's okay. Um. Leo. Leave her alone. Don't harass her. You're probably about to hear an old cat hissing. Um, what is, you know what, Bonnie Jail's nearest, let's go to the Bonnie Jail. Leo, what did I just say? You... Leo, leave her alone! Alright, I'm coming over there, I'm gonna pummel you now, Leo. Okay, well, cat issues, uh, dealt with, let's continue. As we're like ten minutes in, not counting that, and we've done nothing so far. Good, good, I'm, I'm glad that happened, Elden Ring, why did you do that? I... If there's one thing they could fix with Elden Ring, it's the performance. And it's it's not even like a, oh, get a better computer thing. Because it happens no matter your computer. And if you're going to leave a comment like, oh, it doesn't happen to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad it doesn't happen to you. That doesn't mean it's, like, not an issue with the game. It's, it's an issue with the game, no matter how good your computer Sure, it doesn't happen to some people, but that's, well, that's probably just a very strange anomaly if it doesn't happen to you. And it's, I just don't understand why they can't do something about it. It's a technical issue, right? Sure, maybe... You don't have someone with the expertise to handle that, but that's why you hire someone who does. Like, it's it's never okay to allow sub-optimal things for, like, a premium product, you know? If you're paying a premium price for something, you deserve the quality that you paid for. And I, I think some people are really forgiving about these sort of things. And don't get me wrong, like, it doesn't ruin Elden Ring. But there's no reason for it to happen when it can be avoided. And should be avoided. Like, if, a, if some guy releases an indie game that he made by himself... Sure, I'm not going to hold him to the same standards as I'll hold like a triple-A release, but in big releases there's no excuses. And the fact that they've never really even acknowledged it just makes me think they don't want to do anything about it. Or they feel like they can't. Either way, it's it's very frustrating to me because I I hate when games have issues that don't get solved. Especially in these days where games get patched constantly, you know? 
it, you know, it's different back in like, you know, huh. even to some extent the PlayStation 3 sort of generation. But we still got patches then. Like you go back to PS2 generation, if your game had an issue, well, you just probably had to wait for the re-release or like another country's version. Like, oh, the, maybe the European version has some changes from the Japanese version and stuff. That happened in Smash Bros, I believe, on that note. I can't remember the exact changes. I think some of them do with like Fox's attacks, maybe? But it's... It's frustrating, all the same. Because, you know, I... feel like I'm now just going in circles. <laughs> I went that way, right? So let's go this way. And... You can't really... Oh, I mean, maybe you can see it. Oh. Now I can't see anything. Get off! me you creatures but really that's not like it doom 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 this um DLC has some aside from I mean you can definitely see the micro freezes that happen now and then but Buddy, just that that's another slight thing they should do something about. Enemies that are on the floor sometimes just have the worst hitboxes when you're trying to shoot them or hit them with things. It's like I can aim at them, but sometimes my fire spell will just like do that. So I have to aim slightly like above them. Not that still whiffed. It's like what? But in a sense, yeah, all these things, they, they are nitpicks that happen when you play a game for hundreds of hours. Performance, though, there's no excuse. And this, uh, this DLC has worse performance than the main game. I'm not like a game programmer, so I don't know what's causing this stuff. I think people used to speculate that it was uh, something to do with like shaders and how they compile and get loaded into the game. Um, just in case you're wondering, by the way, this is not like ray tracing related. I turned that off. I have done most of a playthrough, uh, not recorded, with ray tracing on, just because I wanted to kind of see what it does. The Elden Ring, and honestly, there are some areas where it's barely noticeable. There are some areas where it looks really nice, but also hurts performance quite severely. In fact, it's not really worth turning on. It's like if I'm recording a video, which, I, and sometimes my Elden Ring videos are basically me like doing this, just like recording background footage. Maybe I'll stick ray tracing on for that. Or if I'm doing like, you know, fashion souls or it's just like da -da 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 -da. None of this is worth, by the way. This is all just been a waste of time. <laughs> and FP for Ooh <laughs> A broken rune. You got me, Miyazaki. But I don't know. Lately, there's so many games where it's just the performance issues really bother me. Oh, like Dragon's Dogma 2. Ugh. I was waiting so long for Dragon's Dogma 2 and it was genuinely quite a disappointment. And perhaps the biggest disappointment of that was how poorly that game performed. I just don't understand. You know, uh, RE Engine, the engine it's on, most of those games have been pretty well performed. Performing? Uh, what am I even trying to say? Words are hard. If 
there's one thing this weapon is missing, it's like a thrust, a stationary thrust. But I mean, that's why we have giant hunt owl. Well, I can only hope that uh, next time FromSoft make a game, uh, Elden Ring 2 or <laughs> Dark Souls 4, whatever they go for, I hope it has... Hmm, okay, cool. Performance... Mm, in the bag? But for the most part, Elden Ring is running better than Dragon's Dogma 2, even though it only has support for up to 60 FPS. Personally, that doesn't really bother me, because um, I only ever record at 60 FPS, because I don't even know if YouTube has support for higher than 60 FPS. If it does, uh, it's probably you have to be special to unlock it, but I feel like 1080p 60 FPS is fine for YouTube. Now the bitrate stuff on YouTube is very confusing because they're saying like, oh yeah, you know, 1080p 60 FPS, like 5,000 or whatever bitrate's fine. I'm like, it really isn't. Like, I think I'm encoding it like 20 to 25, and it still looks a lot worse than some other videos on YouTube. And I think they give priority sort of encoding and quality to, you know, like corporate channels and more important things which i mean it's whatever you can you can see what's happening i hope some areas like this one might be a bit harder because they're darker you look look i know someone put you in a pot it wasn't me why are you getting larry at me for huh What? What are you? What are you gonna do, huh? Ooh, I, I came running into a room and then did nothing. Disgusting. I'm not in the mood for your nonsense, pot people. Like I understand you're sad because people put you in a pot, but like, don't get mad at me. I didn't do it. I'm just. I'm just coming in here having a look around. This is clearly not an official um, prison anymore because it's been abandoned. So look, find his keepers. If I find treasure in here, it's mine. Also, why did Marika slash Mesmer just leave these places like this? Shouldn't they have... I don't know. Done something? I don't, I don't know what, but... I mean, then again, we wouldn't have them to explore if that were the case, so, you know. There's been a lot of discourse about... Oh... Ow. Uh, oh, who's the bad guy? Is it Marika? Is it Mesmer? Is it Mikola? And Again, it somewhat depends on you and how you look at things. If you think what Marika did was justified, then you think it was justified. From a gameplay perspective, or rather... I remember the first time I ever saw that pot coming down, I thought it was like an enemy, like an NPC just like flying, and I was like, oh. Um, hmm. 
especially especially with Mikola, people are like, oh, doesn't this one go up? I'm sure there's one that goes up. Do I have to just ride it all the way up or something? Yeah, here we go. Um, you know what? I'm gonna let you live. Cause you, you're so good at dodging by not even moving. That's pretty good. Helm of Night. Yeah, pretty interesting that stuff. It's uh, basically people born in these dungeons turned into Sauron, <laughs> effectively. Dude. Whatever. Get out of the Shield of Night. Uh, I know I was just about you know, to talk about Mikola and all that, but <laughs> do you do you say S Sauron or like what, what's the other one people say like Sauron, Sauron? Oh, we good. See, I say Sauron. Some people say Sauron, and they're like, oh, well, I'm actually, Tolkien pronounced it like. It's like, right, cool, I don't really care that much. Because I have heard Tolkien say the same term in two different ways. Not specifically Sauron, but one like that. And I think it doesn't matter all that much. I say Sauron. Ah, hmm. oh, balls. Haha. <laughs> what the hell? You see that, buddy? Punish you because you saw it. Have I missed? I feel like I might have missed something here, but I might be thinking of the other jail. It doesn't really matter, though. I don't need anything from any of the jails. So far as I'm aware. What's even the boss of this one? It's not you. That's close. Kind of. But yeah, there's a lot of, um, oh, you know, was Mikola good? Was Mikola bad? And before the DLC came out, I was like, oh, Mikola's gonna be Griffith. Blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't think Mikola was evil. He did some things kind of in the DLC that are evil-ish, and people think, oh, you know, his his rune of mind control, that's pretty evil, right? Um, I would argue not super evil, actually, but that's just me. I, I genuinely don't remember what the boss is in here. A cat Parents' cat is hissing at nothing now. Hmm. Maybe she's warning me about what's in here. Um, whatever. We'll do this. Who is the boss in here? Oh! It's you! Ah! <laughs> and we'll, uh, we'll go through this one too. This one is, um, well, let me level up real quick. Uh, uh, mind? Sure. We're at, um, so one here, one there, 
one. I think that's all, all three of them. I, I can't remember if there's four, but um, yeah. So, mind control, not a great thing, obviously. In the context of Elden Ring, I don't really think it's all that bad what Mikola was doing, though. Hit them where they're weakest. What a bizarre thing. Also, I hate these enemies. They're so stupid. What's going to be the best way to deal with them? Not that. I was actually blocking there. I know I was. I mean, as if Dark Souls games don't have enough of this type of gameplay, you really gotta make a whole enemy that is just that. I think there's a special item one of them can drop. I say one of them. That you can like farm from them. Good good for you, buddy. Oh, that's, I'm not used to being able to actually damage those things without elements and stuff. But um yeah, I'm also not I wouldn't say I'm like, oh the Mikola number one, you know, like I'd say I'm fairly ambivalent in regards to Mikola. Interesting character. Not a character I particularly like nor dislike. Conversely, there are characters I do feel more strongly about, such as uh, Rani? Rani? I don't really like Rani. She's super popular, I know that, but I just... So, let's do, let's do a quick recap of Rani's story. She's a child of Radagon and Renala, right? And she is an Empyrean. I always wonder, what's the point of this ladder when we can just drop? I could shoot him right in his anus. I won't. Like, I could. I want you to know that I could do that. Greater potentatatatatatatates potato. Yeah. Born to Renala and Radagon. Empyrean. Doesn't want to be an Empyrean, so she tries to escape that fate. By killing uh, Godwin the Golden. I don't quite remember why that helped her out. Was it just because she wanted to abandon her flesh and for some reason she had to have Godwin die at the same time? It's It's been a while since I've thought about or looked up Rani's law. Ow. But yeah, so in either way, to, to kill her flesh, she stole a fragment of Destined Death from Malekith. Destined Death is a god-slaying black flame. It's also called the Rune of Death. A lot of people seem to think the Rune of Death is like some sort of magical ring that just controls death. Now, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Because they'll say, oh, well, it means uh, no one can die in the lands between until you release Destined Death by killing Malekith. Cool. Invisible item. Whatever. Um, uh, so, if that's the case, what's happening to everything that we're killing? And also, more so than that, because here's the problem with a lot of Elden Ring lore discussion. 
people will say something like, oh, blah, 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 blah. But then they're, they're coming from that from nowhere. But then they will work backwards from that point to try and justify their claims. Like, for example, they'll say, oh, well, the rune of death controls death. And I say, okay, why do you think that? And then they'll say, well, it means before you unseal it, no one dies. And I'm like, but they, they do die. And they're like, well, actually, they're just sort of, you're killing their body, but their soul is like floating around in the, the great ether. Uh, sure. But then when I ask, why do you think the rune of death controls death? They go, well, because it's the rune of death right but okay where in the game does it say the rune of death controls death because it doesn't it never says anything like that anywhere <laughs> but that's the thing when i ask people that they they just start going like oh, well obviously it controls it because it's the rune of death obviously like uh okay you, you, again you're working backwards and going off nothing but confirmation bias, but okay. Conversely, the rune of death, destined death, god slaying black flame, all the same thing, or forms of each other. There is a lot of evidence for that. I can't quote it all by memory, but if you look at, um, I mean, go on a wiki or like a dump of the game's text or just look in your own game file or not your game file, your, your save file, look at all your items with like Rune of Death, God Slaying Black Flame. It makes a lot of sense because the Black Flame, the God Slaying Black Flame was uh, in possession of the Glomide Queen. Malekith defeated the Glomide Queen and sealed away the God Slaying Black Flame. And then, when you kill Malekith, a black flame pops out and burns the Erd Tree, or whatever, burns away the um, thorns. Why am I coming down here? I don't need to do that. And they, they even say there's even like a line of dialogue in the game where it's like, uh, the, the rune of death is unsealed, black flames, blah dee da dee da and again, some people will say, well, Alex, Destined Death isn't black, it's like red and black. The gods, well, the black flame, like the incantations, I mean, do I have any? Those are not black, like, I don't have Destined Death stuff on me, but that's like black and red, like that. Black flame is black and white. So clearly they're not the same thing, right? Well, black flame is sealed and distinct from Destined Death in the sense that it's a weakened form of it. However, I don't want to be slimered. It's still black. Like, a lot of Japanese games have red and, like, black is the same thing for some reason. Like, um, think about the invaders in all the Dark Souls games. What colour are they? They're red, right? They're called, like, Dark Wraiths and things like that. Look at um, the shmup game, the shoot 'em up game, uh, Ikaruga, Ikaruga, however you want to pronounce that. You have two colours, black and white. That's like what well, the whole game is built around, black and white sort of combos. But actually, they're really blue and red. So I think that's like such a minor distinction. And, but, oh, that was close. I should have waited a bit more. But yeah, at the end of the day, there is so much evidence to suggest the black flame is destined death, the rune of death. I mean, if for nothing else, it's a god slaying black flame, Marika sealed it away and then Rani stole a fragment of something and used it to kill a god. Like, 
doesn't that just make a lot more logical sense than Rani stole a bit of a thing that can control death? Hmm. Here's another thing. Again, if the Rune of Death controlled Steph and no one's dying until we unleash it, what happened to Radan? Because we kill Radan to access this DLC. We can kill Mikola in the DLC. Spoilers. We kill everyone in the DLC before it's been unleashed. So it just doesn't make any sense if you think about it logically. But again, if you if you think the Rune of Death is something that controls death, uh, by all means, give me your in-game evidence for oh my foot. Why that is? That you know that's I go by what's in the game. I don't just like making stuff up. But some people seem to do that. And before the game came out. Yeah, a lot of people thought the Rune of Death was something that controlled death, because it made sense at that point, because we didn't know anything about the game, because the game wasn't out. But some people kept that answer to a question, even though we have a much better one now. But, oh, that's just how I feel about it. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. And, well, thank you so much for watching. Next time, uh, we'll go take care of Lu's Ruined Forge and... The Ruin Forge Starple Pass, I guess. Stop a dabba doo, stop a ba ba ba. Alright, well, thanks so much for watching. Catch you next time. Ciao.